Right now, there's a silent revolution going on with laptops, as more and more of the new laptops are being made with mobile computing chips and moving away from the classic x86 architecture that we've seen from Intel and, and many of the other ones that honestly was invented back in the 70s. And yes, when I say silent revolution, that was an intended pun. This laptop is silent. It's way quieter because it doesn't have a fan. And although the laptops like this one look nearly identical to the classical laptops, the features and the experiences with these Snapdragon laptops is actually drastically different. So in this video, I wanna talk about the four main benefits you get when going with this type of laptop. And this one right here is the ThinkPad X13S, which is powered by the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 Compute Platform. But before we get further into this video, I wanna thank Qualcomm for sponsoring it. Snapdragon is a product of Qualcomm Technologies Incorporated. As I mentioned, this is a revolution going on as more and more laptops are being made with this. So if you're out shopping for a new laptop from ThinkPad, Pad or the Microsoft Surface laptops or a lot of other laptops out there, you might start seeing this pop up more and more. So special thanks to Snapdragon for sending this over and sponsoring this video so I can share with you some of the main four differences you'll see with this style of laptop compared to a traditional architecture. Starting off with the first benefit, as I alluded to with that pun of a silent revolution, this is a fanless design. The Snapdragon architecture allows for a fanless design, which means that the laptop, first of all, won't get hot. You don't have to worry about a fan kicking on and not being powerful enough. Similarly, the laptop is completely silent. There is no fan to make noise. So if you're in a call, if you're recording your screen, whatever it might be, you're never gonna have that sound like your laptop is taking off like a jet. And of course, without a fan on the inside, that gave the engineers more space to work with to make either a thinner laptop design, a bigger battery, or in many situations, a combination of the two. And speaking of battery, that brings us into the second benefit with this laptop. So this laptop has a much better battery life and there's kind of two reasons for that. The first one, as I mentioned before, is that you do have more space in the laptops for a larger battery, but even more importantly than that, the completely different architecture of the compute platform, being the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, gives you a much more efficient power draw. So this means that it doesn't use nearly as much power, it's more efficient with many different tasks, and it allows you to have, on like this one for example, uh, a 28 hour claimed battery life, which as you could imagine, is good for multiple days. Assuming like an eight hour day, that's giving you easily more than three days of battery life on a single charge. So you will see improvements with this style of laptop. And obviously it depends on what kind of tasks you're doing with your laptop, but you could expect to see some especially large power improvements with tasks like video streaming and video conferencing and things like that. Another benefit is that this style of laptop has the ability to be basically always connected. So normally, if you wanna work on, on Wi-Fi, that's great, and you can definitely do that. But if you're traveling on a train or, I don't know, anywhere else in public and you don't wanna to connect to sketchy Wi-Fi, or if you just don't have Wi-Fi around, it is 5G compatible or 4G compatible as well if there's no 5G in your area. But if you get a SIM in here, you are able to, like I was working on a train the other day, it's like a six hour train ride. I didn't, like, I didn't wanna use my phone as a hotspot because first of all, that draws the, the battery down on your phone really fast. Second of all, it wastes uh, data if you have a limit, like a lot of plans have a limit on your hotspot data. And the third thing is that it's really slow. It, it gives you like five to maybe 10 megabytes per second, really slow. Whereas this, having a SIM in here, just like sitting right now in my studio, I tested it and I was getting 100 megabytes down and 25 megabytes up. So definitely a, a really respectable internet speed considering you just put a SIM in your laptop and you can use that absolutely anywhere. But additionally, this means that your computer can now receive notifications and updates, even when it's asleep, just like how your phone already does that. And it does this while really not using much power at all. So very efficient and also very connected, a lot like we're seeing with the phones. And you're gonna see a lot of parallels between this style of laptop and the advantages we're already seeing in phones because Oh, well, it's an architecture that was already used in phones for a while. Snapdragon has been making phone chips for a pretty long time. And the fourth benefit relates to a lot of the newer features that are being rolled out on phones and laptops and things like that, and that is artificial intelligence. So this is more optimized for AI, and the best way to look at this is in the different use cases you'd have. So one example would be an AI-based webcam. You're gonna have better ability to focus on voice and blur backgrounds and do things like that, image processing. There's always a lot of AI that goes on with that, and you're able to do it faster with less power when you have this architecture on your laptop. And the second example, again, with the laptop would be a higher resolution camera. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but most laptops out there are still using a 720p webcam, which is really mind blowing in 2022 when phones are all 4K and 
Like, at the very least, you think you'd see a 1080p, which we definitely do see on here. Okay, so this is a video test using the camera on the Lenovo X13S. Again, this does have the Qualcomm chip in there, so you can see how the camera looks. This is filming in 1080p, and I'm in a room that's just naturally lit, so I have two fairly large windows here. There's a pretty hard shadow on this side of my face, but it seems to soften it up reasonably well. My face looks a little bit redder than it probably is, but you can leave a comment and let me know how this looks and sounds to you. Again, this webcam, compared to many others out there, I don't know, what do you think of it? But of course, you're not always going to be in a nice, well-lit environment like this, so let's go and see what it looks like in a darker room. So here we're in a room that has no natural lighting, so no windows in here. It does have one harsh light up there, but all things considered, it seems that like it still looks like a pretty good image here. I have a, a pretty good exposure balance on, on me. Nothing's too blown out. Uh, some blown out highlights a little bit, but really compared to a lot of other cameras, it, it's still pretty impressive. But let's dial the light back a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm definitely in a dark room. This is not somewhere that I would really ever have a video call. So this is probably like a worst case scenario. Uh, if you were in like a really bad room that had really no great lighting and you're on a call, this is what it would look like. Is it acceptable? How is this compared to other cameras? Let me know in the comments below. So when, when I say the AI optimization, I mean the chip on here has a dedicated processor that can reduce your reliance on your CPU and your GPU and save a lot of battery life, as well as make things more efficient because they're optimized just for that. Now, you might be wondering, okay, cool. This sounds great, but if you have a totally different architecture of your laptop, how does that impact the software? Well, you might have seen my previous videos. I talked about this back when we had Windows 10, which was not so great. But now with Windows 11, we do have a much better experience. I'm seeing a lot of software is on here. We have great compatibility, whether it's emulation or native to this new architecture. The apps that I've been using for the most part really have worked. And over time, we are seeing more and more adoption that more and more of these apps are becoming available every day. So there are apps like Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop and Netflix and Signal and Spotify that you can all use on here that if you have maybe tested, for example, a Windows 10 laptop several years ago, you would not have been able to use that then. So it's really something that's making a lot of progress and I'm happy to see more software adoption as we continue forward as well. And then one other thing is you might be wondering, what about the speed of this? So just gonna show on screen right now what my uh, Geekbench score was with this. I was getting 1098 with a single core, uh, 5762 with multi-core. Overall, pretty impressive considering how little power was used. And Qualcomm's making some pretty big strides with this. So looking at the Gen 3 versus the Gen 2, this is now 40% faster with single thread compared to previous generations. And with multi-thread, it's 85% faster, while at the same time giving you 60% more power efficiency than the 11th gen Intel, the classic x86 architecture, as I said. So when you're buying a new laptop, is this architecture for you? Who is it for? Who is it not for? Essentially, this style would be great for anybody who wants to be connected all the time. Whether you're traveling on a plane or you go to hotels a lot, you go to coffee shops a lot, maybe you just visit other companies a lot, and you don't wanna have to always ask for the Wi-Fi, worry about VPNs, worry about uh, insecure Wi-Fi networks. It's just better to always have it where you can just open it up and you're ready to go connected on your own. Additionally, you do have that really long battery life. So again, tying in with that traveling, if you're on a train a lot, if you're just going around, you don't want to always be plugged in. I think that's a really big positive with this style of laptop, and I'm really happy to see as more and more laptops adopt this chip in here. And of course, the third thing is as you have more AI built into these, which is definitely coming even more than it is now, besides just webcams, so many other things. But you know, like I said, if you are doing video calls a lot, that's a big positive there. But this laptop is obviously nothing's for everybody, right? So who would not want this laptop? I would say anybody who is doing some really, really heavy lifting, you'd be better off getting like an i9 if you're doing some hardcore editing, uh, if you're doing some like hardcore 3D design, or for that matter, if you're using any kind of niche software that might not be available on here yet, definitely look up your software compatibility before you get this laptop. But in general, I am impressed with this. I think it's making a lot of progress and I love to see this new design have so many cool features and benefits over the traditional architecture. But leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this style of laptop. Thanks again to Snapdragon for sponsoring this video. See you next time. Okay.